Hi, everybody. Welcome to the John Meyer Podcast. Today's topic, do more with less. And before we get to our topic, how about we give our guests a moment to introduce themselves? Hey, everyone. Mike Thompson here. I am from AMD's Cloud Business Unit. I'm the product manager for AMD's products in AWS, both in EC2 and for some of the services. Mike, our topic is do more with less. And before we get to our topic specifically, we're here at AWS reInvent. How's reInvent going? reInvent's been great. It's been really busy. It's been really vibrant. Maybe more attendees than last year, which was kind of uh, nice to see. Uh, and very, very, very vibrant, lots of engagements and some things have changed since last year. So it was really interesting, interesting to have a chance to talk with customers and partners about what they see in their industry and what challenges and opportunities they're looking to attack in 2024. Did you have a chance to make the show floor? You know what? I didn't. I haven't even walked the show floor yet. I don't think I've picked up any swag from any other vendor yet. It's been lots of meetings with customers, lots of meetings with partners podcast with you, was on GeekWire, all sorts of parties going on this year. So I haven't even had a chance to walk the floor yet. I think I'll regret that this year, but it was worthwhile. I had about one hour to walk the floor. We've been in the studio nonstop. You've been here a couple of times already. Uh, you didn't get any swag, but I think you did get some swag from us. And if you didn't, please stop by and grab some swag. Yeah, thanks for the poker chips with the AMD logos on them. I like those a lot. I handed some out and I'm keeping some for myself. I'm glad you liked them. So we did that for all our sponsors to have something to hand out swag while you're here at Vegas. There's some cool memento, something that you can leave on your desk. Well, you know, it's funny. Uh, I play poker with my boys about once every month or two. And the last time I was playing, my cards got mussed while cards were flying around the table. And I had ace jack suited. And so I've needed a card protector for a while. So that's going to be it. And that's not going to happen next time. Be a marker for your golf clubs, right? That too. For, yeah, it works out pretty good. Talk to me what you are talking to AWS attendees about and AMD. So the tagline of all that is something that you already said. It's all about do more with less. So there's a number of things that are new from AMD in AWS uh, this year. In the span of two months, which is seven times faster than prior generations, AWS rolled out four new instance types based on AMD's latest and greatest fourth generation Epic uh, processor. We call it Genoa. Uh, and so they rolled it out seven times faster than last time. The last generation, that took them about a year and a half to roll out those four instance types. This time around, they did it in two months. And so that's where half of my summer went, but it's really good. Uh, the generational performance and price performance improvements on, this, on these ones is really good. Unprecedented uh, improvements. Maybe the best that we've seen in the last 25 years. And so it's really exciting. And that drove a lot of interest in a lot of discussions here at reInvent. Mike, does that mean that there's new uh, EC2 instances in the AWS console to be utilized that are backed by AMD? There are, there's four different types. There's the M7A, which is the general purpose instance type. There's the R7A, which is memory optimized, the C7A, which is compute optimized, and then a really fascinating one. You know, AMD has a long history of driving uh, the best in high performance computing. And AWS has a high performance computing optimized instance type called HPC 7A. That's the second generation of high performance computing instance types. So a wide range of instance types uh, suitable for a wide range of workloads with at least 50% performance uplift generationally from the prior generation. So pretty significant boost in performance and really significant boost in cost efficiency or performance per dollar. Mike, with these new instance types, what happens to the old instance types of generation? Does that mean I should migrate to them? So good question. And for AMD Epic powered instances, there's really two generations. And depending on the characteristics of the workloads that you're trying to run, you should go with one generation or the other. For performance and time bound workloads, they're really best serviced by the fourth generation AMD Epic Genoa that are in AM, uh, AWS's seventh generation instances. So C7A, M7A, R7A, HPC 7A. For workloads that are always on or that are not bound by CPU performance, meaning they're waiting for network access to complete or disk access to, to complete or storage access to complete, the processor sits around idle while those processes are looking to finish. There's really no need to pay for the highest performance 
data center processor on the planet if the CPU is going to be sitting around idle. And so for those ones, they should go for our third generation Epic Genoa, excuse me, Epic Milan, which are the sixth generation AWS instances, so C6A and so forth. Um, on those ones, we have 10% lower hourly cost than the alternative x86 everywhere in the world except in India and in Mumbai in particular, where they're 45% lower cost. So for those types of workloads, they really want to optimize for hourly cost. So if that's the target, if that's the goal for a particular workload, then they should be targeting the sixth generation of instances from Amazon that are powered by AMD. Mike, doesn't utilizing the Epic Genoa powered instances for performance come with some type of cost associated with it? So, you know, that's an interesting question. Uh, when I first brought the seventh generation, the Genoa powered instances to market and we took them out to our customers, one of the first things they said, one of the first things that I heard is, wow, that sounds really great. I love it. But I look at the cost and it seems to be the retail cost, the hourly cost is kind of a lot. And they think, oh, well, I can't afford it. But that's actually an incorrect conclusion uh, for performance and time bound workloads. What you really need to look at is the net job cost, not just the hourly cost, but the job costs. So, for instance, with Redis databases, if you compare uh, a workload that's running on x86 versus the alternatives, the Epic Genoa instances have about 2.2 times the performance of the alternative Intel instance. Because it runs so fast, it means the job runs in half the time. And so at 2.2x the performance, the net job cost is roughly 50% of the equivalent Intel instance. And so it's important for customers that are really concerned with performance or uh, time to done, time to decision, to look at net job cost, not just hourly cost, because that can lead you to an incorrect conclusion. We're talking about energy performance and consumption, but what about energy and sustainability? You know, so there's actually a two prong answer to that. So uh, first I'm gonna answer springboarding off of uh, uh, the answer that I just gave you. With that higher performance, because it's possible to reduce the footprint within uh, the public cloud that's running a given job, maybe you only have to run half the number of instances versus the alternative x86. So that reduces energy consumption quite a lot, which is of course, it, which is of course greener. But then if you compare the processors themselves head to head, the performance per watt from AMD Epic Genoa is at least 50% uh, more energy efficient than the alternative x86. So there's really a two prong return that compounds. Mike, I'm gonna come back to the reInvent stuff that we've been talking about. You had some sessions that you put on and talked about. What were those sessions and how well were they received? They were pretty well received. And the topics that we were going over there is pretty much what we've been talking about here um, with the high performance from uh, Genoa power inst powered instances, the seventh generation uh, EC2 instances. Uh, they create a new type of cost optimizations, what I call performance driven cost optimizations. So that was a lot of the topic of the topics. And then what can customers do with that? I see. Um, a lot of customers, two thirds of their spend, especially in the financial services industry and the manufacturing industry, while there's a lot of uh, eye popping and buzzword uh, laden uh, workloads that they run, that's only a third of their spend. Two thirds of their spend is on general IT, stuff that's not very sexy. It's not all that appealing. No one wants to talk about it because there's no buzzwords. But if two thirds of their spend are there and then something like say generative AI comes up, something that they haven't already budgeted for, if they simply go into their general IT workloads, flip the switch from I to A, they can save 37% on those workloads and then take that capital, which used to go and subtract from their bottom line to drive their bottom line towards red ink. They can take almost 40% of that spend and shift it over into value generating workloads, mission critical, line of business specific workloads that can actually generate value and add to the bottom line and drive the ink towards black ink rather than red. I think you gave everybody a little bit of a hint on how they can find the AMD instances within the EC2 console, but I'm going to let you explain to everybody what the A is or how they find it within various instance types. Yep, it's pretty straightforward. So for the last two generations, there is a common suffix. There's an A at the end of the instance type. So if they go into their EC2 console, grab the instance, uh, the instance type selection dropdown, 
and just look for one of the A's. Um, if they're, if they have a performance driven workload, then they want, they want to look for star seven A. If they need to optimize for hourly cost, which a lot of general IT workloads really need to do, they should look for star six A. Mike, I have two more questions for you. Uh, I'm going to leave this one question for last because it's going to be a fun one. What is, but this first question is, what does the future look like for AMD in 2024? I think 2024 uh, looks very good up and to the right. And I expect a lot of growth to be driven off of the seventh generation instances from AWS. Um, we're seeing really, really fast adoption of these instance types, and we're only a couple of months into them being in general availability. So that's really good. Uh, my plans are to travel the world, to connect with partners and customers and sellers, AMD sellers, partner sellers, AWS sellers, to help them understand how they can extract value by targeting AMD powered instances. My last question for you is, how are you recovering from last night's Busta Rhymes event? Oh, my God. So we had the Omnia nightclub rented out uh, last night. Uh, AMD rented it out last night. We filled the place, and we had a foundational contributor to the hip-hop world, Busta Rhymes, come and play. And I've got to tell you, he was one of the classiest guys I've ever met. He really knows how to work a crowd, man. He had that place lit. Uh, so that was really exciting. I'm recovering pretty well. Um, I, I, I took the, the sensible decision to mostly drink seltzer water last night. Um, but yeah, recovering pretty well and went home right after the show. while the other half of the contingent went out and painted the town red, but it's been a busy week. Uh, I'm looking forward to slowing down. I think I had about three proper meals during, uh, this week at reInvent. <laughs> I'm right there with you. <laughs> uh, the same deal, a little snack bars, a little munch here and there. Exactly. Mike, thank you and your team for inviting me to attend. Uh, especially, I was able to come in with the crowd, come in with you guys, meet and greets on a number of things. The event last night was awesome, so I really appreciate the invite. It was good to have you. I'm glad you can make it, John. All right, Mike, thank you so much for joining me. Ben, it's been good to talk to you again, John. Looking forward to doing it again. I'm looking for 2024 with AMD. Let's go. All right, everybody, this has been the John Meyer Podcast. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and notify because guess what? We're out of here.